Welcome my friends to MJ Hobby Corner. Uh, MJ here and for today I have a uh, not too long video uh, about a, a project that I'm, I'm doing on the side. Uh, as you have noticed, we, you've probably noticed that we're doing a lot more games on the channel now and that's because well there are a lot of games that we want to try out and, and put on the channel for future. Um, and a lot of my scratch building projects, a lot of my stuff is going moving over to Patreon. Uh, and uh, of course, I have my scratch builder monthly, which is a perk that uh, patron members get in the second tier. And that's about a 30 page uh, document, and it's all about scratch building. And there, I just write up all my projects, and, and it's meant to be a companion to the videos. It doesn't work against the videos necessarily, it's, it's a companion. It is, allows me to write down and gather my thoughts about a lot of these projects okay so that's on patreon however i do want to announce that i may open up a war games vault uh little store shop very soon and so uh there is a version of scratch builder monthly that will probably go on war games vault okay and i'm probably charge a dollar or, or two dollars at most and uh that version of scratch builder monthly is going to be a little different from the patreon one in that I'm going to include a, a few extra stuff. It's going to be a little bit more robust, but the stuff is extra. And whereas the Patreon one uh, is going to be more uh, geared towards the actual scratch build uh, projects. I think what I'll do is for the War Games Vault, uh, you will see some written battle reports with the scratch builds in them. And that's the point is to show the scratch builds being used. Okay. And it, it, all of the stuff is very low budget. Uh, very low budget scratch builds, etc., etc. So I wanted to make that announcement here on the channel. Uh, I will announce when I have the War Games Vault thing ready, and of course I may even do some homebrew rules and test them out, and you know put it on for very, very inexpensive, like a dollar, like I said, and people and then test them out and give feedback and you know that kind of stuff. So So I'm making this rock work and I use some foam as my armature or my skeleton, right? Uh, but future rocks may be done in different ways, I, I'm not sure. But the idea is to use my a very simple paper mache recipe. Now I use I sculpture with this paper mache recipe. All this is is toilet paper, some flour. I added a little cornstarch to the flour. Uh, cornstarch is a little bit finer material. It's a filler material and it seems to work very well with the flour. You can also just use flour, water, and glue, and then add a little paint to that. And that makes gesso, basically, all right? And then uh, in your, your uh, if you leave it like that, that makes gesso, that's a protective covering. A lot of builders now use gesso to cover the foam, and then they paint over the foam and all that good stuff, okay? Uh, but we're gonna go a step further from the gesso. There are many different, um, gesso recipes out there but uh we're going to add some toilet paper to that and we're not going to boil it okay there are paper mache recipes that where you boil it and when you do you make a nice dough like substance you can also make it more watery less watery you know depending on the different recipes so for today we're going to do something very simple but before uh, here is an angler fish that I sculpted with the paper mache. Okay, and uh, I haven't finished this guy. We are going to add some stuff here on the on the bottom to cover the mouth. Let me just give you a little example. Okay, nice ugly little dude. And this is going to be for Deep Wars. It's also going to be for Julie's undersea armies. And of course, this guy has to get painted, right? He can't stay like that. Um, and so this is made with a tin foil armature in there an egg shaped uh tinfoil piece glue the two the cocktail stick to that tinfoil piece and then sculpture the paper mache around the tinfoil now the tail also has tinfoil okay so all the paper mache is then added and sculpted and make a rough fish shape and it works very well for these kinds of fish because they're so ugly okay recipe we can also make beholders Okay, and here's this beholder, nice and ugly. Look at that guy. 
he's nice and ugly. Um, and he has, uh, I haven't dry brushed this yet, okay, but his little eye moves and all that. And this is for my Spelljammer fleet, but it could be used, of course, in any context. And with this paper mache recipe, we can also sculpture. Here is an armature for clay. Uh, that I made a long time ago and I, I'm gonna do something with this uh, not for gaming it's gonna be a display piece okay but we can use paper mache to sculpture now for the recipe itself you could use tacky glue but tacky glue is more expensive so I'm gonna use Elmer's glue okay and again we, this is gonna be a short video I don't want it too long all right uh, so let's just uh, put a few pieces on and show you exactly what I do. So basically I use two tablespoons of the cornstarch and flour. And I have a cup of water here. Uh, I'm going to use much less than a cup. Okay, so that's about a... And so I use a little less than two thirds of a cup, okay. Um, and I'm just gonna mix this a little bit. Now if I find it's too watery, which it might be, Maybe I added too much water for the uh, mixture. Then I just add some more flour agent. Now remember the glue is going to uh, also thicken this stuff. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add about half a t tablespoon more. That should make it thick enough. And the important thing is to add the glue. We're doing a little bit of studio cooking here. Could also measure all right, let's measure with the, whoops. And I have a full cup here. These are medicine cups. These are also good for, uh, you know, keeping measurements. I love saving these measuring cups and I'm just gonna pour the whole thing. And it's basically the whole cup, which is about, uh, used about 25 milliliters. Let me see, 25 milliliters, okay. Not millimeters, milliliters. I said millimeters uh, accidentally. Okay, and add a little bit of water, get some of that glue out. Melted chocolate. I used purple on this, and that, that's because this was leftover uh, paper mache from the fish, <laughs> right? And I had extra, and so I decided oh, I'm gonna use it on some rocks so it doesn't waste. Right, and so I'm gonna be redoing a lot of my terrain um, little by little, okay? And uh, so, yeah, it's just a thing. Now this is gonna look like chocolate, but yeah, don't eat it. What I do, okay, so I'm gonna tear my toilet paper apart a little bit and just put in a nice, you know, soak it in there. And this stuff gets really moist fast. Oh, there's a little bit of glue there, okay? And it becomes very, look at that, okay? Becomes, so again, this method is not for everyone because it is very messy, okay? It is very messy. It's a very messy method. I'm there and just kind of mix it in, okay? And again, if you boil it, 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 it gives it a whole different consistency. Um, it mixes quite well. It, it's a whole different, it, it depends on what you want it for, all right? I'm not using any kind of boiling for this particular recipe. And uh, I used to sculpture with this stuff. So you can even take it by the spoon and just slap it on. I made just a little bit for demonstration, but of course you want to cover everything. And it becomes a thick paste when you do it okay now i have i've added some stones to this um so i don't want to cover all the stones i'm going to be try to be careful okay and you let this dry for about 24 hours it takes about 24 hours in a room temperature to dry and man it gives you like this really strong covering and it's excellent for making rocks however I'm going to be making uh, trees, well, I'm going to be redoing all my trees, and I'm going to be re redoing uh, a lot of terrain in the coming months, and uh, I'm going to be recycling a lot of the older stuff, okay? So I think I'm going to make my rocks like this from now on, and I have a, a lot of different recipes to explore. 
Now for sculpting, you don't want it like this. For sculpting, uh, for making the fish, I actually uh, make the paste a lot thicker. So you add more glue, less water, make it a lot thicker, make it a little more doughy, and uh, then that goes on the armature. And then that's how I make things like the beholder and the fish. And then you got to let things dry a little bit before you go on. Once they dry, then you continue with the sculpture. Whoa, whoa. A lot of that is going to be on my Patreon, folks. Uh, that's for my patrons to, uh, to see um, a lot of those techniques. Uh, but you will see stuff here on the channel as well. Okay. So, all right. I'm getting it into all the cracks. And we're going to let this chocolate dry. And uh, another way I do it, instead of using uh, this kind of stuff, this foam, uh, I use tinfoil. And tinfoil works very, very well. I crumble up some balls of tinfoil and that's it. All right. So I made another batch and this one's a lighter uh, tan. I didn't add the chocolatey brown. Okay. And uh, with this mix, I went from two thirds, I went down to a half a cup of, uh, so I started with two thirds of a cup of water and then went down to a half cup. And uh, really, if you want to work with just one batch, uh, I would suggest just going straight down to a half a cup of water and then adjust your other uh, ingredients to your liking. You know, it's because if you want it thicker, uh, you definitely want more glue, less water. Um, also your, your paper is going to make it thicker. So the more uh, toilet paper you use, the, the thicker it'll be. Now for this one, and notice how I'm using the spoon to kind of sculpt it a little bit. Uh, with this one, I used paper towel. Paper towel is a lot thicker and I mixed it with the toilet paper and you get a much thicker medium. Okay. And so we're going to talk about making trees, uh, big rainforest trees with this stuff. We're going to be making some cave tiles with this stuff. We're going to sculpt some creatures. We're also going to do water. Yes, you have heard me correctly. Water. We're going to use the same method to sculpture some very low budget water. We're going to start with some small ponds, move our way up to waterfalls. And this is a technique that I saw on another channel. So I will be giving full credit to that channel. And uh, that'll be for another video. Okay, so definitely uh, check my Patreon, check uh, Scratch Builder Monthly Magazine. I will probably be putting a version of it on War Games Vault. And it will have all these little projects and things that I learned. This is a technique that I actually learned from our colleagues in the railroad uh, model hobby. So a shout out to all those railroad modelers. They do some great work, really. So now that I covered everything, we're going to add some grit. Okay, just to give it a little bit of fine uh, texturing. Um, and uh, this dries quite nicely and I covered all of the cardboard. Okay, and we can add some larger stones if we want. One of the things I love about this is the texture that this provides you know it's very different uh, now i'm gonna just add a couple of embed a couple of stones okay just in there and these are i got these from the dollar store they're gonna be repainted anyway so i don't worry about what color they are they come in gray and like gold just kind of embed them in there make sure they're embedded okay just give a little bit more stony material. Now, once this is finished and painted, we could add our flock, you know, and all that stuff. Now, this is not nothing new. Nothing. Uh, people have done this many times before. Okay. This is not necessarily innovative. As I said, this technique um, originates in the railroad, model railroad hobby for making, you know, uh, cheaper. Sorry, I, I was... Not on the camera fully. Okay. So, uh, yeah. And it's not a technique for everybody, but it does make some really cool stuff. We're going to be talking about a whole bunch of different things that we can make. All right. And I just want to show down here to make these lumps of rock just 
take the uh, toilet paper and paper towels that are together in the mixture, lump them up, make little meatballs, and then that's how I get these rocks right here, okay? So we're gonna let this dry. Now, if you want to speed up the drying process, take a blow dryer and uh, blow dry on high, right? At least five minutes, you're gonna have to be there a while. It'll really start to dry everything up. Then let it dry slowly for, you know, uh, whatever amount of time, okay? It will speed it up a lot. So it might be under 24 hours, but if not, just let it be, let it dry totally until this becomes rock hard, no pun intended. All right, folks, I'm gonna finish my chocolatey rock and you'll probably see it painted. Check the community tab. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, you guys are great. Thank you for being here on my YouTube channel. Um, more things like this in the future and of course more creature sculpts and all that. A lot of that stuff is, is moving to Patreon. Uh, but you will see stuff here as well on my YouTube channel. All right. Thank you folks and we're going to talk very soon and uh, you enjoy your day. Be safe out there.